Hi, thank you for joining us today at Oklahoma Central for our webinar on holiday recovery. My name is Jana Aramita. I'm our financial development officer here. And today I have Leah Bowles and she will be over our Q&A if you have any questions. She's our director of community engagement. Please don't hesitate at all during the webinar if you have any questions today, just to type down in the chat box or in the question box. It may take us up to 24 hours, but we will get back with you with any questions that you have. Also, if several people ask the same question, Leo will go ahead and interrupt and we can go ahead and get that question answered while we're here today. Uh, please excuse my voice. I'm dealing with allergies and it's coming and going. And today's webinar will not last 30 minutes like they usually do. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll give everyone else just a quick moment to get on and then we'll get started. We'll go ahead and get started with today's webinar of Holiday Recovery. So one of our best ways to be able to begin with your holiday recovery is by having a no spending month. And that does sound crazy and ludicrous sometimes, but we look at, as we go through this webinar, uh, looking at paying mainly for one month, just our bills that have to be paid and only spending money on our must-have items to be able to help us rein in on our spending and saving. I don't know about you all, but I know for me, I have to do this each month, especially after the holidays, regardless of how much I budgeted for. Where a lot of us still seem to go over at the holidays or around times when we have a lot of events going on. So during the month of no spending, during this month, we're gonna to try to refrain from spending any extra money other than necessary expenses. So some of the things that we look out for in necessary expenses are, of course, our food. That's something we have to have. Um, our rent, house payments, gas, transportation, health care, and child care. And while we're doing our trying to cut back on spending months, some of the things that we can look at that we'll talk about as well as looking at possibly not eating out as much as what we usually do on gas and transportation, maybe look to see if it's cheaper to use Uber or Lyft or public transportation for a few days. Also, a good way to do on saving for gas is to look at the clubs that we have in town, for instance, Sam's Club. If you're a member with them, you're able to save a little bit on your gas each time you fill up. There's a number of different apps that are out currently that can help save on for gas as well. We want to look at our health care, different ways that we can look at that, look to see if possibly our pharmacy offers prescription discounts or if they have coupons, a number of different things that we may have to be able to look at to help us save money during this month as well. Now, trimming our spending. A few things that we can look at is to buy store brand instead of name brand. And sometimes that can be difficult and sometimes it can be easy, but we just need to look to see where our bargains are at and what it is that can get us more for our money. Also, if we do the grocery pickup or if we have delivery or takeout, we can look to see what may be cheaper. I know for me, for instance, I love having my groceries delivered. Um, when I do my trimming back on my spending, looking at ways to cut my um, save money, that's one of the first things that I look at doing is stopping my grocery orders that are delivered to the house. I pick up my groceries instead of having that. And that can save sometimes up to $20 a trip, depending on how many times you have it delivered. We also wanna look at setting up, if we haven't done it already, an energy assessment of our home. Lots of utility providers offer these at no charge to their um, members, different things that we can look at to see if different ways we can be more effective in our home with our energy. 
Another thing we want to do is look at to compare our gas prices at the warehouse clubs like I spoke at just a minute ago versus the grocery store and the gas stations. For instance, I know at Walmart, if you buy their gift cards, when you go to fill up, if you use a Walmart gas station with one of them, when we swipe it, it takes a couple of cents off of it. And while we're trying to save money, every penny can count during that time. Another thing we want to look at here is our costly seeds on our coffee. Our children are going to cost us money, so we're not saying we can't spend money on our children, but just look at different ways where we can save. Carry out, we're going to have a couple of options of if we do take out or carry out five times a week, let's look at narrowing that down to maybe two or three times a week, that it be more of a treat. We are going to look at some ways on cutting costs for our cable if we decide we could even do away with cable completely. Also look at ways on our cars. We know that those are very expensive for us. And cell phones. Those are another thing that can end up running up our bills for us before we even realize how much we've actually spent. So to begin with this on tips for beating the costly seas for coffee. Several things we can do. I know for me, I love to have that coffee in the morning and I love grabbing one on the way to work. But when we're looking at saving costs, we can look at to brew a cup of coffee at home and go ahead and pour that in our cup and bring it all into work. That way we save ourselves from stopping and spending at least $2 on most places just to get a cup of coffee. We can look at to the reusable K-cup fillers if you like to do the Keurig fills for those. Those are really nice to have. I've actually invested in those myself in the last few months at home. And it's been really nice and it has saved quite a bit of money just being able to buy that and fixing that K-cup real quick myself at home. Also, another thing we can look at is ask for, ask coffee as a gift for gift cards. I know for me during the holidays for my kids, that was one of the things I did do for them for stocking stuffers was gift cards to all of their favorite coffee shops. Um, another way, too, we can look at it um, saving for our coffee is the different apps that are offered through the different vendors. A lot of them will have, after you purchase so many cups of coffee, you get one free. That does add up to look and make sure we're tracking that to be able to get those free cups of coffee from our local coffee houses when we like to enjoy a cup of coffee and just make sure that we keep up with that. And they also will offer a lot of different things in their apps. And sometimes they'll offer just some of those special deals to save a couple of cents on that, if that's what we like to do, is hitting up on the coffee shops. Another tip we can look at is on for our children, for on reduce amount of spend, amount, you know, reduce the amount of money spent. One of the things we can do is set some ground rules. If you take the kiddos with you to the grocery store, maybe set up some perimeters of, okay, this time we're not going to get anything at the grocery store, but if you're able to do all of your chores and get all of your homework done, the next time we go to the grocery store, set a limit of, I'll spend $5 on this for you this time. Do our treats in moderation for our children. Just because we're trying to save money doesn't mean we're not going to have any more treats or anything like that. It just means we're going to look at ways of cutting back so that we're not having quite so many. I know when my kids were little and going to the grocery store, you have several, I want, I want, I want, putting in the shopping carts and it is a lot easier sometimes just to go ahead and give in and give them that treat if they want. But when we set up for things for before we go in here, before we even leave for the grocery store, this is the amount of money we have, we're not spending anything extra today, That'll help a lot in it too for looking at ways and it helps with treats and moderation to show that we really do celebrate and we have treat times and not to be expecting things. We can also look at carry out. I know this is a big one for me, especially when I come home from work and I'm exhausted at night and cooking is the last thing that I want to do. Some of the things that we can look at is to try to meal plan and meal prep ahead. So that way we're able just to stick something in the microwave or on the stove or in the oven real quick as we're changing clothes after we get home. One of the things that we can do too is try to stick to our shopping list when we go to the grocery store to help us with that meal prep and to help us with not wanting to do carry out because we know we've been grocery shopping, we've meal prepped, we have the things at home that are ready to go to be able to heat up pretty quickly. 
We can also look at eating um, less meat than what we normally eat. Try to look at more vegetables and fruits in with that. Um, buy non-perishable items in bulk. I know for me, since like everyone, the cost of everything is going up. I've stopped buying just one can of this or one can of that and started buying my vegetables in the cans of four. And that will usually get me through till two or three weeks. And look at those of what it is that we can buy in bulk that doesn't perish, that'll stay good for a little while, that we'll have right at our disposal, that'll be very easy for us to use during the evenings after we've worked all day and we're tired. We can also look at if you're a leftover person to look at utilizing leftovers. Look at planning meals with different ways of where you might have a leftover night that you've meal prepped all week or you've cooked dinner for three nights and you have three nights worth of leftovers. You can have that fourth night be a leftover night or look at when we're meal planning that we're able to incorporate different goods in with other meals. For instance, if we cook up hamburger meat, maybe we don't need two pounds. We can use one pound of hamburger meat for tacos and one pound of hamburger meat for a casserole that we may want to use. Different things like that that we can look at to be able to help save us money will help and being able to stick to our shopping list. And when we go grocery shopping and have that done, we know then that we have things that are home that are easy. Or for me, one of my things when I'm grocery shopping each week, I always include a pizza in it because I know I'm going to have a night that I'm tired and a pizza at the grocery store, as we all know, is a lot less money than what a pizza at doing it from the carry out place could be. Again, if you have any questions while we're going through this, please don't hesitate to ask those in the chat box and we'll be able to answer those for you. Another thing that we want to look at on costing money is our cable. We can look at to see what are some different ways that we can cut and save on our cable. We could consider cutting, cutting cable altogether, or you could even look at choose one streaming device like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Peacock, Disney, or others, not to where we have all of them. I know for me, for instance, there was a while where we had Prime, we also had Netflix, we also had Hulu and Disney, so, and we also were paying a cable bill. So those are some things that we can look at seeing what is it that can help us save money for that so that we're not using all of those and spending 10 to $15 on each one of these services, how it is that we can eliminate it to just one. I know for uh, me and my household, we did eliminate it to where we just went with one cable provider and only have one service that we have that's included in something that we're already paying for. We can also always visit our local library to rent DVDs. Another great thing is the apps that we have on our phone. They'll often place shows for us, be able to watch the different things we want. We may be able to have to deal with an ad or two here and there for 30 seconds, but that just depends on if we're okay with dealing with that for 30 seconds versus saving $15 a month. Those are some of the things that we want to look at while we're looking at our saving cost and trying not to spend so much during the month. And I know a lot of people that have cut their cable and have went to just one um, option for their streaming devices, and they've been really surprised by how much money it actually has saved them. And looking to see too, how often are you using Netflix? How often are you using your Hulu? Or are you using your Prime more? I know for me in my house, that's one of the things that we did to look at to see what streaming devices are we not using that we're paying for and essentially we're just wasting our money when we're not using it. So that's another big thing that you can look at to see and never forget we have our local libraries all around that they're, we're like able to rent DVDs from them. And of course, like I said, our apps on our phone and they offer so many different live streaming things now. We also want to look out for our car. As we all know, our automobiles, those are one of the most expensive things that we own. We can look at trying to save on our gas to combine trips or do carpool. And by combining trips, for instance, if we know we have several errands we need to run in a day, go ahead and look through that list of what they are and map it out of what is the farthest from home and what's going to get me back the quickest instead of going and running a few errands and then going back home and then out again to run a few errands and going back home. Those are some things that we can look at. Carpooling is always an option if you live in the same neighborhood with coworkers or your kids go to the same school with friends, seeing about taking turns with carpooling. 
Um, we can also consider to go down to one family vehicle if that would be possible. If it's something that, that would be um, possible to have where someone else drops off and is able to go run errands and then go pick someone else back up. If you have more than one family car and that's an option for you, that's another great way to look at saving some money. And we can also, this is something that we should be doing each year regardless, is shopping around for more affordable car insurance. Each year, you really should take the time to look at three different insurance companies and call and verify and make sure that you actually are getting the best rate for your car insurance. I know here, even at the credit union, we work with an insurance company and we have all the information that's on our website. But um, we urge our members to please give New Haven a call and see if they can save you some money on your auto insurance or your home insurance. There's just a number of different things like that that we can do each year to save money. But while we're in our months of trying to save money, those are really good options for us to look at and to see how much money we can actually be saving. Another thing we want to look at is our cell phones. We want to look at to see, are there ways that we're able to negotiate to a no lower bill? I know for me, um, my bill did go down quite a bit after I had paid off an old phone. So those are other things to look at. How long is it that we're able to keep our phone before going and upgrading to the newest one that they have out there? Those are ways to help save money as well. I really enjoyed for myself when my cell phone bill was down that $30 for the time being before I upgraded. We also want to look at if we have kiddos and it's teenagers and they're working or they're babysitting or they dog sit, they do lawn work, different things like that. Have your kids help pay for their part of the cell phone. That also teaches them responsibility and it gets them ready for when they're 18 and they move out or they go away to college. Um, for getting used to paying their own bills and having them accountable for it. And it also shows them when they're paying for their own cell phone bill, exactly how much does it cost them. And when they're spending their own money to pay for the bills they have, it would surprise you the things that they can decide that they can do without or cut down upon. Another thing is considering cutting our internet to reduce our cost in using unlimited phone internet instead. There's just a number of different ways that are out there right now that are being offered by providers to help us to be able to save money. And avoid upgrading until we absolutely have to. I know for me, one of my things, I will not get a new phone until my phone stops working or I've dropped it so many times, the screen shattered and you can't see it. But try to avoid that upgrading until you absolutely need it. That way you can save money. Or if it's to where you absolutely need one, but you really don't want to pay what the cost is for a brand new cell phone right now, one of the things you can look at is upgrading to what a newer phone is, just not necessarily the newest phone that they have out on the market. Those are a number of different ways that we can look at to save for our internet service. And always don't hesitate to reach out to your internet provider and let them know, I need to look at ways to be able to cut this bill down most of them will look at different ways and be able to go over it with you. And also ask around, ask your friends and family, hey, how much are you paying for your bill? What are some things that you're doing to cut down on your cell phone bill? People are always usually happy to share those tips of how it is that they're able to save money and cut costs for things that may be needed. Well, that wraps up our webinar for today on that from cutting with that. I did say it was going to be a shorter webinar today. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to even reach out to us through our website. We're happy to answer any questions that you may have. We also have on our website through our financial capability page. Um, we have our financial capability tab through our website page and we have our bonsai link which it has a number of different modules to walk through on ways to look to save money, things that sometimes we don't necessarily think of cutting little costs that can save us a lot of money in the end. So again, thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions on anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're always happy to help in any way we can. And we look forward to seeing you next time.